Another method we can use to determine the phenotype of Abraham is looking at the oldest and closest ethnic relatives of Abraham within his genealogy. This leads us to Joktan. According to the scriptures, Joktan is the son of Eber and brother of Peleg. Peleg is whom Abraham would descend from. According to tradition, the descendants of Joktan are Southern Arabians called Joktanites. The Joktanites are considered to be the purest or original Arabs of Arabia. Joktan, Kwaktan, and Koktan. Joktan's descendants are called Joktanites. There is an Arab tradition that Joktan was the ancestor slash progenitor of all the purest Arabian tribes of Central and Southern Arabia. According to ATS Bible Dictionary, Joktan, son of Eber, and by him connected with the Hebrews and other Shemite families, he is believed to be the Koktan or Yaktan to whom Arabian writers trace their purest and most ancient genealogies. And according to Easton's Bible Dictionary, there is an Arab tradition that Joktan, Koktan, was the progenitor of all the purest tribes of Central and Southern Arabia. The terms Quaktanite and Quatani refer to Arabs who originate from South Arabia. The term Quaktan is mentioned in multiple ancient Arabian inscriptions found in Yemen. Arab traditions believe that they are the original Arabs. According to Britannica, people of Arabia. According to tradition, Arabs are descended from a southern Arabian ancestor, Quaktan, forebear of the pure or genuine Arabs, and a northern Arabian ancestor, Adan, forebear of the Arabized Arabs. And according to Encyclopedia of the Bible, Joktan, Joktan, a son of Eber and a brother of Pelek, and from whom 13 tribes of Arabia sprang. It is said that his descendants lived from Misha to Sephar. It is apparent that he was the ancestor of the older Arabian tribes. According to the book Biography of the Prophets, it reads, As for Arabs of the Abra, they were the Arabs of Yemen from the descendants of Quaktan. And according to the book titled Arabs in the Shadow of Israel, it reads, the common view popularized by medieval Arab genealogists is that they originated in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula and then moved northward. This view is largely based on the claim of Muslim Arab historians that their oldest ancestor is Quaktan, whom they identify as the biblical Joktan. It is fairly well known that Arab genealogists divide the Arabians into two ethnic stocks, the Arabian Arabs and the Arabized Arabs. The Arabian Arabs, according to this division, are the South Arabian stock associated with the Yemenites. They are descendant from Joktan and form the original stock. So now that we have an understanding of who the Joktanites are, how are Joktanites described as looking? This can give us a clue as to how Abraham may have looked, since Joktanites would have been the closest ethnic cousins to Abraham, both groups descending from Eber. According to the book titled African Presence in Early Asia, it reads, The Encyclopedia Britannica gives a description of the physical qualities of the original Arabs. The inhabitants of Yemen Hadranaut, Oman, and the adjoining districts in the shape of the heat, color, length, and slenderness of the limbs and scantiness of hair point to an African origin. They claim descent from Kaktan. These Yemenite kings, descendant of Kaktan and Hamir the Dusky, a name denoting African origin. The general characteristics of the institutions of Yemen bore considerable resemblance to the neighboring ones of the Nile Valley. And according to the book titled Early Israel and the Surrounding Nations, it reads, the people of Sheba belong to the South Arabian stock. In both blood and language, they differed considerably 
from the Semites of the north. Physically, they bore some resemblance to the Egyptians, and it has been suggested that the Egyptians were originally immigrants from their shores. Some of them crossed the Red Sea and founded colonies in Africa in the modern Abyssinia, where they built cities and introduced the culture of their former homes. Like the Egyptians and the Babylonians, they were a literary people. Their inscriptions are still scattered thickly among the ruins of their towns, written in the letters of the alphabet, which is usually termed Phoenician. And according to the book, A Periplus of the Persian Gulf, it reads, The people of Darfur are of the Quaktan tribe, the sons of Joktan, mentioned in Genesis. They are of Hermetic or African rather than Arab types. Joktanites are described as looking like Hamites and Africans. We can actually dig even further into the description of Joktanites. There are two important details about Joktanites. One, Joktanites are the first or original or pure or genuine Arabians. And two, Joktanites were located in South Arabia, they're Southern Arabians. Therefore, let's read the description of Proto-Arabians and South Arabians. How are they described as looking? According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, regarding the origin of the Arab race, a third is the name Hamir or Dusky, a circumstance pointing like the former to African origin. Sixthly, the pre-Islamic institutions of Yemen and its allies provinces, its monarchies, courts, armies, and surf bears a marked resemblance to the historical Afro-Egyptian type, even to modern Abyssinians. Seventhly, the physical confirmation of the pure-blooded Arab inhabitants of Yemen, Hadramaut, and Oman, and the adjoining districts, the shape and the size of head and slenderness of the lower limbs and comparative scantiness of hair and other particulars point in an African rather than Asiatic direction. Lastly, the extreme facility of marriage which exists in all classes of the southern Arabs with the African races, the fecundity of such unions and the slightness of even absence of any caste feeling between the dusky pure Arab and the still darker native of modern Africa may be regarded as pointing in the direction of a community of origin. And according to Dana Marnici, ancient Arabia was occupied by a people far different in appearance than most modern day occupants. These were a people who once occupied Egypt who were affiliated with the East African stock and who now speak the Hamitic or Semitic languages. The Arabs were the direct progeny and kinsmen of the dark brown gracile and kinky haired Ethiopic peoples that first spread over the desert areas of Nubia and Egypt. Early Greeks and Romans did not usually distinguish ethnicity between the peoples called the Sarsians and the inhabitants of southern Arabia, the Yemen, which was called India Minor or Little India in those days north southern arabians from the inhabitants of the horn of africa strabo around the first century bc philostratus and other writers speak of the area east of the nile in africa as arabia and the people are persistently and indiscriminately and sometimes simultaneously referred to as either arabs indians or ethiopians the dark-skinned south arabian today is short and extremely round-headed brachiocephalic, but he was no doubt originally much taller and dolicocephalic, long-headed, like the so-called Hamites of East Africa. Early pre-Christian skulls from Hadjanaut were marked dolicocephalic. Henry Field suggested that Arabia's current ephiography is the result of the mixing of two distinct basal stocks, the dolicocephalic, long-headed, dark-skinned, Mediterranean slash Eurafrican. Henry Field in his Ancient and Modern Man in Southwestern Asia argued as well, Dravidian and Arab have in them an inheritance from a common stock. 
an inheritance which has been retained more completely by the natives of India than by the people of Arabia. Marshall's and von Effrenfield's remarkable insight has the support of contemporary ethnology and modern genetic research. Sir Arthur Keith and Dr. Wilton Maran Corgan in their discussion of the racial characteristics of the southern Arabs opined that the Arabian Peninsula was at one time occupied by a people intermediate to the Somalis on the one hand and to the Dravidians of India on the other. And according to the book titled The Negro in the New World, it reads, it is quite conceivable that the great peninsula of Arabia was once populated as far as its natural conditions allowed by a primitive Negro stock. And according to Henry Fields' Anthropology Memoirs, it reads, Among these Negroid features which may be counted normal in the Arabs are the full, rather everted lips, shortness and wideth of nose, certain blanks in the bearded areas of the face, below the lower lip and chin and the cheeks, large luscious gazelle-like eyes, a dark brown complexion, and a tendiness for the hair to grow in ringlets. Although the Arab of today is sharply different from the Negro of Africa, yet there must have been a time when both were represented by a single ancestral stock. In no other way can the prevalence of certain Negro features be accounted for in the natives of Arabia. And according to the book Travelers to the Middle East, it reads, the people of Arabia belong to the two distinct and apparently quite different races. The Arabs of South Arabia are smaller, darker, coarser featured, and nearly beardless. All authorities agree that the Southern Arabs are nearly related by origin to the Abyssinians. Abyssinians, by the way, are Ethiopian peoples, also known as the Habasha peoples. So, Southern Arabians are being compared in their origin to the Habasha peoples. According to the book titled Racial Types from South Arabia, it reads, Racial affinities of the South Arab lie in Northeast Africa. A Negroid strain occurs in the belt from Africa through South Arabia to Malaysia including the Dravidians of Southern India. According to the book titled The Arabs, the original inhabitants of Arabia, then according to Sir Arthur Keith, one of the world's greatest living anthropologists who has made a study of Arab skeletal remains, ancient and modern, were not the familiar Arabs of our own time, but a very much darker people. A proto-Negroid belt of mankind stretched across the ancient world from Africa to Malaysia, giving rise to the Hamitic peoples of Africa, to the Dravidian peoples of India, and to the intermediate dark people inhabiting the Arabian Peninsula. So the original inhabitants of Arabia and the southern inhabitants of Arabia are described by anthropologists as looking like Africans, Negroid, Ethiopian, Dravidian, etc. and have dark brown skin to black skin and curly hair with dark eyes. Now, let's look at depictions of these Arabians.
So as for these Arabians, they are quite obviously dark-skinned. If Abraham resembles Joktanites, who are the first and pure Arabians and lived in South Arabia, then it's quite obvious to see that Abraham would have phenotypically resembled them, i.e. dark-skinned, specifically medium brown to black-skinned, thick curly black hair, and dark brown eyes. The descriptions and depictions of Southern Arabians, Joktanites, matches perfectly with Shem, since Shem descendants have been described as ranging from light brown to black. According to Rabbi Eleazar, he especially burlesqued Shem and his sons black but calmly and gave them the inhabitable earth. The Persian historian Tabri quotes Abin Abbas as saying, Born to Noah were Shem, whose descendants' colors are a black complexion, with a light brownish undertone, and a dark blackish brown. Barhebraicus speaks of Noah dividing the world among his three sons, Shem, the land of the Browns. And according to the history of the messengers and the kings, the children of Shem settled in the center of the earth, which is between Sadma and the sea, and between Yemen and Syria. Allah made the prophets from them, revealed the books to them, made them beautiful, gave them a black complexion, luminous and free of blemish. What's interesting genetically about Arabians is that Southern Arabians in Yemen have the highest amount of Natufian ancestry and are genetically closest to Natufians. And it's already been stated that Natufians are the ancestors of Semites. According to the paper titled The Genomic History of the Middle East, it reads, Arabians and Bedouins are positioned close to ancient Levantines. When we substitute Levant Neolithic with Natufians as source of ancestry in the Middle East, we found that Arabians could be successfully modeled. Arabians require additional ancestry from a Natufian-related population. And according to the paper titled Projecting Ancient Ancestry in Modern-Day Arabians and Iranians, a key role of the past exposed Arabo-Persian Gulf on human populations, it reads, Modern Saudi Arabian and Yemeni samples cluster tightly in the lower left quadrant overlapping with the three Natufian samples and were close to the Levant PPNB slash PPNC and Levant Bronze Age samples. If you look at a simple distance chart dealing with the Natufians, Yemenites, people of Southern Arabia and Bedouins are positioned closest genetically to the Natufians. Also, if you look at ancient DNA within Arabian and Yemeni populations as well as Bedouins, they have the highest amount of Natufian DNA. They're technically the most Natufian when it comes to modern populations. This is likely because they were isolated in the deserts of Arabia and therefore were able to retain more of the Natufian genome. Now this is interesting, since Arabians are genetically closest to Natufians, we already know the Natufian morphology which is considered African in appearance. Perhaps this is part of the reason why Arabians look the way they do. After all, Natufians are genetically 60% Arabian. The Natufian sample consists of 61.2% Arabian, 21.2% North African, Abramurujan, 10.9% West Asian, and 6.8% Omotic, East African. And according to the paper titled The Questionable Contribution of the Neolithic and the Bronze Age to European Craniofacial Form, it reads, Interestingly enough, however, the small Natufian sample falls between the Niger-Congo group and the other samples used. This placement suggests that there may have been a Sub-Saharan African element in the makeup of the Natufians. As shown in Figure 1, the Somalis and the Egyptian Bronze Age samples from Nakwada may have also a hint of a Sub-Saharan African component. If you look at Figure 4, you can see that Natufian is situated in between Niger-Congo and prehistoric slash recent Northeast African. This is again in terms of cranial facial form. And this fits exactly with what we read earlier about how Southern Arabians look because they were described as looking Negroid or like groups within Northeastern Africa such as Ethiopians, Kushites, and others. 
Therefore, the phenotype of the Natufian matches perfectly with the phenotype of Southern Arabians and the group we call Joctonites, ancient relatives to Abraham. Which makes sense because these same Arabians have the highest amount of Natufian ancestry genetically. They are also the closest to the Natufians in the world. But this all makes sense if Natufians are the ancestors of Semites. Therefore, looking at a Natufian or Southern Arabian is like looking at a proto-Semite. Reconstruction of a Mesolithic Natufian man based on the Jericho skull excavated in Israel. The ancient DNA analysis of Natufian samples has revealed that they were ancestral to the Levantine Neolithic population, forebears of the contemporary Semitic speaking groups of the Middle East. And according to an introduction to African civilizations, it reads, there is evidence that some 7,000 or 8,000 years ago, a black Negroid race inhabited Palestine. Even Sir Arthur Keith argues that they were clearly Negroid, distinctly prognathinous, and with wide faces, flat noses, and long, large heads. Sir Arthur Keith goes on to say that these early black Palestinians may have been the ancestors of the Semites or Arabs of biblical times. As I stated earlier, looking at a Natufian or Southern Arabian is just like looking at a proto-Semite, early Semitic populations. And therefore, yet again, another good example as to how Abraham could have looked. With that being said, another interesting aspect concerning Arabians and Joktonites is the story we find in the Book of Jubilees. The Book of Jubilees states that Eber married and had children with Azurad, the daughter of Nimrod, who was the son of Cush, and Cush was the son of Ham. From the union of Eber and Azurad came Joktun and Peleg. If the story of the Book of Jubilees is true, this would mean that Joktonites, Arabians, have Hamedic Cushitic African ancestry. However, this would also mean that Abraham has it too. The Book of Jubilees mentions the name of Nimrod, the Greek form of Nimrod, only as being the father of Azurad, the wife of Eber and mother of Peleg. This account would thus make Nimrod an ancestor of Abraham and hence all Hebrews. The Book of Jubilees chapter 8 reads, Eber, and he took unto himself a wife, and her name was Azurad, the daughter of Nimrod. She bare him a son, and he called his name Peleg. Azurad, the daughter of Nimrod, and granddaughter of Cush, and great-granddaughter of Ham, who would have been a Nubian, Sudanese, Nilotic, and Nilo-Saharan. Ancient Cush in the biblical era was Nubia, located in Sudan. Ancient Nubians are a Nilotic and Nilo-Saharan people. According to Britannica, Cush, region and kingdoms of ancient Nubia, Africa. Cush, also spelled Cush, the southern portion of the ancient region known as Nubia. According to World History Encyclopedia, the kingdom of Cush, it reads, Cush was a kingdom in northern Africa in the region corresponding to modern day Sudan. The larger region around Cush, later referred to as Nubia, was inhabited circa 8000 BCE but the kingdom of Cush rose much later. And according to the book titled Daily Life of the Nubians, it reads, the ancient Egyptians referred to a region located south of the third cataract of the Nile River in which the Nubians dealt as Cush, most often in the phrase Val Cush or Wretched Cush. And according to the book titled The Nubian Past, it reads, the name of Nubia has long been used to describe Egypt's southern neighbor. Historically, other names have been applied to this region and its inhabitants, Kush being a widely used term in the ancient world, as well as Ethiopia. And according to the article titled, The Kingdom of Kush, Sub-Saharan African Rulers of the Nile, and it reads, The roots of the Kushite kingdom emerged near the third cataract of the Nile River in the early 3rd millennium BC, developed from cattle pastoralists who are known to archaeologists as a group or pre culture. The Kushite kingdom is mentioned as Kush in the Old Testament, 
Ethiopia in ancient Greek literature, and Nubia to the Romans. Nubia may have been derived from an Egyptian word for gold, Nub. The Egyptians called Nubia Taseti. If you take the Book of Jubilees to be true, then Eber essentially married a black African, a melodic Sudanese Nubian woman. Perhaps this explains why Joktonites even look African or Hermetic to begin with, according to anthropologists. Nailadid, specialized African type native to the swamps and savannas of the Upper Nile region in South Sudan and adjacent countries. With their black skin, they belong to the darkest people on earth. Their thin bodies are the tallest of all indigenous human groups worldwide who are still alive. Their legs longer than in any other known group. Only poverty and malnourish keep individuals below their genetic height potential. Heads long facial features coarse with a rather wide nose, full lips, and kinky hair prognathony weak. Nylots seem to be a relatively old group that might have extended further east into Ethiopia during prehistoric periods. The most typical variant is the Dinkid, native to the swamp regions. A similar savanna counterpart is the Shulukids. South Nilots show less pronounced features, possibly due to admixture. In Chad, the admixed West Nilots Shari type is found, and very ancient varieties still exist between Sudan and Ethiopia, the pre nilotid a proto-Nilotic unity separate from an earlier undifferentiated Eastern Sudanic unity is assumed to have emerged by the 3rd millennium BC. The Eastern Sudanic unity must have been considerably earlier still, perhaps around the 5th millennium BC. The original locus of the early Nilotic speakers was presumably east of the Nile in what is now South Sudan. The proto-Nilots of the 3rd millennium BC were pastoralists, while their neighbors, the proto-central Sudanic peoples, were mostly agriculturalists. Nilotic people practice a mixed economy of cattle pastoralism, fishing, and sea cultivation. Genetic and linguistic studies have demonstrated that Nubian people in northern Sudan and southern Egypt are an admixed group that started off as a population closely related to Nilotic people. Nubians are considered to be the descendants of the early inhabitants of the Nile Valley, who later formed the Kingdom of Kush, which included Kerma and Moro, and the medieval Christian kingdoms of Merkaya, Nabotia, and Almaday. These studies suggest that populations closely related to Nilotic people long inhabited the Nile Valley as far as southern Egypt and antiquity. As I stated earlier, if the Book of Jubilees is true, then Eber would have definitely married a black African, an Elotic Sudanese Nubian woman, since Azurad was the daughter of Nimrod, and Nimrod was the son of Cush, and Cush is the son of Ham. And this perhaps explains why Joktonites are seen as rather African or Hamitic rather than anything else. The people of Darfur are of the Quaktonite tribe, the sons of Joktun, mentioned in Genesis. They are of Hamitic or African rather than Arab types. If the Book of Jubilees is true, then this would also mean that Abraham would have black African ancestry from Azurad. But either way, looking at Joktonites, who are the pure or original Arabians and are Southern Arabians, the ancient and closest relatives to Abraham gives us an even deeper insight as to how Abraham may have looked, i.e. dark brown to black skin, with thick black hair and dark brown eyes.